Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on, what, am, what is it? <laughs> uh, Mona Mar, Mona Mar. I always want to say Mona Me. Um, collection, this is a designer collection from Graphic 45. So it is a re-release of um, a previous uh, collection. Um, so it comes in a DCE pack and the DCEs now come in 12 by 12 and eight by eight. So that's kind of interesting. That's new um, this year. So we're gonna start by laying down the two edge, edge pieces. These are half inch, I cut them at a half inch. They may wind up getting slightly covered, but um, that is what you're gonna start with, a half inch strip from e for either side. And these are from the 12 by 12 collection pack. I just like the larger scale. Mm. Yeah, the small scale looks good too. It's much tighter as, as you would imagine. Of course, I can't find it at the moment, but there it is. So you can see there's, there's quite a bit of a difference in the scale. So I like the larger scale for this. So um, this is a great collection for Valentine's Day um, or any romantic uh, anniversary, something like that. But I'm kind of thinking of Valentine's Day since it's uh, mid-January. Not too far off. Okay, I'm going to turn this sideways. Again, we're on page one. I've already inked the edges and I'm using uh, mahogany powder puffs as usual. There we go. And the reason I'm installing these first is there's going to be a flap that gets installed right here and it may slightly lay over this and it just makes it easier for installation. I've learned that um, trying to install a flap and then push a, a half inch piece in is a little bit more challenging than just laying it down first. So we'll get these in. There we go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install two flaps. And uh, once they're installed, they're going to open like that. So one is going to get installed this way. One will get installed this way and they'll open to the left and right and have a centerpiece inside. So I'm trying to decide which one I want to lay on top. I think I want it to open. So this is page one. So that means the spine is here. So I think I want it this way. So this flap, you're gonna need two, is five and three quarters by eight. Five and three quarters by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the five and three quarter inch side. I'm gonna try to line up my grid here. And this is going to be butted up right against that strip that we just added. There we go. Okay, now we have a second flap. And... I'm going to change the orientation, but one of the ways that I make sure that there's no interference um, with, with these, since they're both exactly the same side, is I rest it right on the top of this. And then when I fold it over, um, by definition, it's going to shift it slightly. And then when I reverse it, it's going to be able to close all the way without being stuck in the, um, the hinge area. And that's going to make a little bit more sense in just a second. So again, I'm going to rest it here. And then I want to make sure left and right, it's even. And then I'm going to push it over and let it find its location. And push it into place. There we go. 
and I did not keep it square. You can see I'm off, but then when it closes, it's definitely clear of this area. Now you can see I'm off at the top a little. So I'm gonna see if I can lift that right away, and if I can't, then I'll put some undo on and take a break and come back in a second. Sometimes I can get it off if it hasn't sat very long. I think I'm going to be able to get it. Yep. Okay. So we'll do that one more time. If you don't have a spatula, get one. It will save you a lot of misery. So the important thing is hanging on to both sides and not letting it shift like I just did. And then while maintaining the sides, push it into place. There we go. Much better. Still off a little bit on this side but it looks really good on this side. So that's what we've got for these two flaps, left and right. And it is gonna close this way. So we'll pl place a magnet between these two. Now over here, I've designed a pocket. It's a very small pocket. It's five and a quarter inches wide. And it is three and a half inches tall. Five and a, I'm sorry, five and a quarter across and three and a half tall five and a quarter, three and a half. You're gonna score half an inch on three sides. So you're gonna wind up with a finished three inch, three inch by four and a quarter pocket. Okay, and we're gonna install it right here, but I just wanna make sure there's no interference with this flap and there's not. And part of the reason I wanna install it this way is because I want this hinge to be on that side. Okay. There we go, that's right. Then we have two waterfalls. Four and one eighth by four and five eighths. Four and one eighth by four and five eighths. And they're gonna get installed right here on the top. This is a little below it. Oops, this needs to be trimmed down one eighth. So hang tight. I thought I had already done that. Now this is all gonna be held together with an insert, and this insert is four and one eighth by seven and a half. Four and one eighth by seven and a half. The um, pattern that I use to decorate the insert is from the eight by eight collection pack. It's getting stuck on the hinge. It's gonna drop down a half inch. Okay, so those are the cuts. So you have two five and three quarter by eight, two, four and one eighth by four and five eighths, one five and a quarter by three and a half, and then one four and one eighth by seven and a half. Okay, let me organize um, my designer papers and I'll be right back and we'll start decorating. Okay, I'm back. Um, I've got my papers lined up. So I'm gonna start by adding uh, paper to the pocket down here. This is from the eight by eight collection pack.
We don't have to worry about magnets because we're going to use an insert to hold everything in place. Okay. And I decided on this simple pattern for the pocket backdrop. It's going to go right here. I'm going to take a little bit more of that. Just a little bit. Okay. And then add some ink. Okay, so for the, the pocket tops, we're going to use this simple print, which matches the pocket. Oh, that is so short. I wonder why I got that so short. I'm going to have to put a strip in there. Okay, this is the flip side, and that means this is probably short. Yes, it is. Maybe I forgot to shorten this. Um, originally, it was four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And yeah, this one is correct. So the measurements I gave you are right. I, I failed to cut one of mine down a little, so I'm going to recover that by either adding a strip or cutting a larger. Since I already glued this down, I think I may add a strip here. But as for the last page, the flip side, I'll just cut a, adjust it by cutting a larger piece of this pattern paper. It just looks like I need to add a quarter inch. Yeah. Or maybe even just an eighth is what it looks like. Let's see. Yeah, looks like about an eighth of an inch to have the same border. Okay, so um, that's what it will look like. I've got to recut that paper. And then, like I said, this is four and one eighth by seven and a half. It is going to hold everything together. There we go. And then here is the print for this large flap. Uh, eight by eight. So e everything is eight by eight except for these two strips. Definitely the lighter. The one thing I miss about in DCEs is you don't get um, like the solids. Everything is a pattern. So I kind of miss having a solid um, to work with in the designs. Okay. Now we still need to do this, this, and these. So the next thing we'll do is add our magnets. Thank you. 
here's the one that was cut, trimmed to the right size. I think the uh, other flap that I installed was one I hadn't trimmed. It happens. That's one of the reasons why I like to lay things down as soon as possible so I don't get them mixed up. Okay, that's it. I need to take a quick break, recut this, and then get these three and this one lined up. Be right back. Okay, I've got my uh, inside papers lined up and I went ahead and trimmed this out so it's inked and ready to go. And I just made it a little bit longer to make it fit. And if you follow my measurements, um, all of yours will be the same size <laughs> instead of off by an eighth of an inch. So that was uh, my prototype was for four and a quarter and my finished was for four and one eighth. And here's why. And I try to share this with you uh, as I come across it and as I think about it. The reason why four and one eighth for the black flap is common in my designs is because that means I can cut my designer paper into four inch uh, slivers. And those four inch panels, you know, I can get three four inch panels out of a 12 by 12. If I do four and a quarter, that means I can only get two. I wind up short on the third one. So that's why it's a common um, measurement. Um, it's, it's about using the paper wisely. You can still do it the other way. It just means you have to do some color blocking or you're going to need, um, you know, more 12 by 12s. For example, if I did this with the eight by eights and I did four and a quarter square, I'd only get be able to cover one uh, flap per eight by eight because the remaining parts of the eight by eight would not be big enough to fill it. So that's just um, food for thought as you're designing your own albums. And just to give you some insight on why I design some things the way I do. And that's pretty common. Um, I almost always, sometimes I like it looking bigger and then I always come back and like, oh, I can't afford to lose that much of my eight by eight. So I come back and redesign it so that it's winds up being the designer piece consumes four by fours. Then I can get cover four panels. Okay, now I misplaced or mislaid my insert, but it doesn't really matter. I don't need it right now. Okay, so for the inside, um, we are gonna use this pattern, which brings this back in. This is also from the eight by eight, and I split it in half. And here's an example of where an eight by eight isn't going to be able to cover both of these panels. So you have to do some cover, uh, some color blocking. So you're going to see, you know, both ways. So again, this was an eight by eight and I split it in half using four inches on each side. And then I trimmed an eighth inch off the height. Wow, I did something with Mod Podge earlier today. I forgot how strong that smells. Wow, it's knocking me out. Okay, and then we're going to use a nice bright color to go in the spread in between. Now this I'm gonna to trim to fit. So I am going to lay it in and mark it on the hinge, then mark the center and then the next hinge. And it'll look like a continuous pattern, but I am gonna do a break where the papers fold right here. So I'm gonna trim a slim piece like this, the middle piece and then another small piece like so Okay, ink 
three. And these, it's symmetrical, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, if you wanted this to be three and that to be five, you would just adjust the, the center accordingly. So you might have a, a little bit wider red strip on one side than on the other. And that would be very interesting to look at as well. Now I cut on this side, so it's just going to be a continuation of the pattern. I need to get out of the hinge area. In our last piece. My hair is almost long enough to tuck behind my ears, but it keeps falling back out. It's right in between. I need to either let it, let it grow or get a haircut. Okay, that's my last design element. What do you guys think? I don't know, that seems kind of crazy. Maybe I'll add some more, pull this back in. That seems kind of boring, doesn't it? That's just an awful lot of that pattern. Although I do like it. So far I like it the best. Upside down. Upside down. What if... What if we do this? And then, I like it, I like it. That. And this kind of gives a nod to that. Of course, it would be color block, so there'd be a black seam. Or the reverse would be this way. I like it a lot. Ok, 
Okay, and then I'm going to trim this to fit. That's what we're doing. You saw it happen right here. That was not pre-planned. That, that's really what it takes is a whole lot of shuffling around. But then once you get a couple of things nailed down, then your 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 options are limited, um, if that makes any sense. If it's The hardest part is when you haven't picked any pattern for your page. Um, but each time you add a pattern, you start to limit the other decisions that have to be made. Now, one of the things that's been eliminated for me moving forward is I know I'm not going to use that as a primary design in any, any of the other pages. I'll choose a different pattern. So the first page of the first page I design in an album doesn't matter if it's page one or not is the hardest one to do because my options are almost limitless. The more I build, um, the less options I have. So the pattern coordination gets you know simpler because I just I know I know that's off the table. I can use this on a main page, but I won't use it heavily on an internal page because I've done it so heavy here. Hopefully that makes some sense. I had a couple of people asking me about the, the paper coordination process, and it really is the most time-consuming part of the project. Not the page design, it's the how I'm going to layer the papers. Now in Stampery and Chow Bella, I find it to be a little bit easier because they're patterns, uh, just the way their patterns are designed, they look, what's the word I'm looking for? They look kind of like collage already, you know, with different shapes and textures in a given design, in, on a given um, sheet, 12 by 12. So it's hard to do a lot of layering. Um, so like a page this complex, just does, it's really hard to pull off with a Stamperia. You don't have enough contrast um, unless you introduce something outside of their collection. So it tends that my graphic 45s are the most complex because I've got patterns that, that sharply contrast. It lends itself to that. And you, you would see if you took one of my graphic 45 design um, albums and then built it just exactly the same and just layered in Stamperia or Chobella, you'd, you'd be like, hmm, a little underwhelmed, you know. It's hard to color block with their collections. With a sharp contrast, either in the shape or the color, it makes it much easier. Okay, now I gotta find my, my doodad so we can keep this thing all closed. And here it is. So I'm likely going to put some sort of ornamentation on this page, um, maybe something up here, possibly even a charm, and then something here. And what I have, what I'm leaning towards is just this simple frame in a frame, uh, just to pull the reds back into the center of the of the page. So before I finish this page, I will come up with those. But right now I'm going to break, and um, part of not being able to make a decision right here is knowing uh, I don't want to consume larger pieces of paper until I've gotten through more of the build process. Right now I'm only on page one. So um, I'll be back shortly so we can finish up this page. And like I said, I might put a little sentiment down here and something at the top of this. Another way to do that or to create that illusion is to run a banner. Um, and I like to do that about three quarters of an inch from the top, um, where I used my, um, stub die, not die, punch. Um, so I'll come back and we will make a couple of small adjustments, but that's pretty much, yeah, I'm really happy with this. Pretty much page one. Okay. Hope you guys enjoy and I'll be back soon with some of the embellishments. Hello everyone. Okay, I lined up um, a couple of things to embellish the cover. So I'm going to pull this pattern back in from the outside. Um, so you can either leave this blank with the intent to put, you know, some photos here, um, or you can use this as your decorative 
decorative page and then plan to put your photos on the inside. I'm gonna go ahead and add some embellishment so then you have a choice, right? So this is uh, four and a quarter by two. So four and a quarter by two. And it just happened to be a piece of scrap I had laying around. This is one of the cut aparts from the 12 by 12 collection. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna offset them like so. Okay, now I'm gonna lay this on my grid real quick and see if I've got, uh, pretty much got it squared off, slightly off. Okay, there it is. <clears throat> And then I'm going to center this between the two edges. Now, this is my insert, and I, I'm not real happy with the way that looks. I feel like it needs to be broken up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, there's two things we can do. We can either add a trim piece uh, that runs through it that sort of breaks the pattern up. I don't really like that. I think I would pick something else. I'm not caring for that either. Um, I wish I had some green. Um, and then, uh, this might be a better idea, right? Or just make a second insert. Now, <clears throat> the issue with the second insert is the size of the pocket and the size of the inserts. If you decide to put photos on both front and back, a secondary insert will not work. Um, it'll be too thick. So if you want to do two inserts, I would recommend making this an eighth inch smaller, and then you'll have what you need for the volume to include photos on both. So um, I'm leaning toward uh, adding some sort of a decorative strip here to break it up. I'm not caring for that either. And I think I'm, I really wish I had some patterns. <laughs> I mean solids. I said patterns, but I meant solids. Um, all the decorative strips are, they're mostly black and I'm not caring for that. Yeah, see it doesn't do enough to break it up. Maybe a light tan strip. Let me see if I can find a piece of scrap. <clears throat> like that diamond, yeah, like this. I'm going to cut a strip and see how it looks. <clears throat> so this is just kind of a test. Yeah, I'm not caring for that. If I had this ivory, I would use it. So the other option is, so I'm not caring for any of those, the other option is to put an embellishment here. So um, I do have these cut apart, and then of course we have I do have the chipboard pieces. So let's see if we can find a chipboard piece that we like. Um, that will work. <clears throat> I just have a little box of these. <clears throat> <clears throat> I 
You kind of like that. And then we have this too. So far, none of those are making me happy. <clears throat> <clears throat> That might be the answer is a strip of the pulling that back in. Or this. Let's see if I've got one wide enough. Nope. Is it too narrow? I think that's what I would use. That's the strip I'll use. So I need to find eight by eight from that strip. Here it is. And it's the right width. And then I'm going to line it with black. Normally I would um, color block this, but since I already uh, glued this down, I can't do that. So the way to make it look color blocked is to just glue it to a piece of black cardstock like so. And lay it down. So that's what we're going to do. We need to ink it. And I made this 3 8 inch wide. It's really just preference. It's so small, I'm going to have to hand, hand trim it. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. Looked like it needed something. <clears throat> and I think that's going to be it for page five. Let me clean up a little bit and we'll go over the, the design one more time. Okay, so um, I put black cardstock behind both of these and of course behind that. And then we've got this nice large layout on the inside. 
So if I recall correctly, this is five. It's about five and a quarter. So you could definitely do a five by seven here if you wanted. Um, or you could do two four by fours. So, or, you know, some combination thereof. Okay, and then we have this nice large insert. Two flaps. And this holds everything in place. Okay, that's it for page one.